had five kids. He was very funny, and he was very pragmatic. And he also died during the holidays. And I had a feeling my father was thinking, well, everyone's here. <laughs> Why make two trips? <laughs> now, I don't know if that went into John's thinking, but the point, it makes the point that John Bowman could be your friend, he could be your exact contemporary, and yet he still felt like your dad. I, I remember the night I met him. We were both 20, but you see, but he felt 40. He, he felt 40, that, that voice, that hair, that, uh, even the name, John Bowman. I, I, I just wanted to buy life insurance from him. <laughs> And his, and his comedy seemed like from another era, too, you know? I heard one of my favorite John Bowman jokes was, I asked the professor if he liked Thomas Pynchon, and he said, I prefer Pynchon Chorus Girls. <laughs> Pynchon Chorus Girls? This was 1980. <laughs> So he was 40 when we were all 20. When I, I was 25, when we're all 25, I'm out there just trying to get a date, and he's already married with five kids. <laughs> now mind you, five kids is nothing in the Bowman family. All the Bowmans, all his siblings have nine kids, and they would look at Bowman's measly five kids <laughs> and think, well, he's our brother, He's gay. <laughs> and we love him. <laughs> when we were 40, we were 40 and all just settling into our careers, John was already retired and getting hip replacements. <laughs> he was getting hip replacements, and he had a proud big career behind him. He created shows for black people without ever having met one. <laughs> so now we're in our 60s, and there's John, once again, on to the next phase. And, and it's funny, because just a, just a few weeks ago, somebody said to me, Mike, you're fat and disgusting. <laughs> And I said, but Denise, <laughs> all my friends are fat and disgusting. And she said, not John Bowman. <laughs> he was the fittest of us all. So if there's a lesson we can take away from his life, it's don't exercise. <laughs> See, I beg of you, don't exercise. Eat garbage. Carpe Donuts. Um, <laughs> the fit will go first, Jeff Martin. You are not with us for long. <laughs> Dave Mandel will bury us all. Um, anyway, I've beaten that premise to death. Uh, I just want to say a few uh, sincere things. Uh, I loved John from the moment I met him. He was my friend for 43 years. He always made me laugh. He was always in a good mood, and he was always so good to me. Um, when we met in college, we were both taking a course in Samuel Johnson, and I had skipped so many classes, I didn't know who Samuel Johnson was. <laughs> I, I thought he invented the steamboat. And, <laughs> And John, who I just met, said, come over to my room. We'll, we'll study all night. He gave me his notes, which were impeccable. We pulled an all-nighter, and he helped me get the highest grade I ever got at Harvard. B minus. <laughs> <laughs> when I wrote my first book, uh, he threw me a book party. It made me feel like a real author. And when I wrote my last book, he bought 40 copies thereby doubling my national sales. 
So, so that's, that's why it hurts me to see somebody, somebody I love so much, somebody so dear is gone when there are so many people I hate <laughs> still walking the earth, many of them here today. <laughs> So uh, let's hear uh, from some more of John's friends, and ironically, we're going to give Lawrence O'Donnell the first word. Yeah. <laughs> 